Good morning, folks. I'm Ben Davidson. And I'm Thor of Thor News. Thor has a channel in the same vein as mine, so to speak. He came out to see the Mobile Observatory near Dallas-Fort Worth yesterday. CJ Ransom showed up as well, which was awesome. Thor's channel is linked for you below. By the way, you are indeed watching our solar tornadoes destabilize and then plasma flowing into nearby magnetic fields. Spectacular. Well, here it is, folks. Interplanetary shockwave. We've seen only one CME impact thus far. It was moderate pretty much any way you slice it. The particles did indeed act like a secondary shield when they wrapped around Earth, sweeping away most cosmic ray activity. The drop there. You can see it was only moderate on the magnetometer, mild deviation, but with our weakening magnetosphere, the geomagnetic storms ensued, low levels only. Both those auroras and the high energy protons surging right now affect the polar regions first, and that's what we see on the DRAT. Those events are somewhat off and on. You see the disruption flashing at high latitude. Remember, the equatorial color is the ionospheric effect from the actual solar flare energy, contrasted with the particle effects, which you see near the poles. We had only small M and high C class flaring the last day. It was completely confined to the large departing sunspot groups. When we look at those, and the one nearing center disk, we find a bit of magnetic complexity left at the trailing southern portion, while a bit of spread has taken over to the east bit less complexity. We're also watching the limb for more spots cresting. Well folks, the bigger quakes are indeed picking up. We had multiple readings peaking near 6.6 .6 in Indonesia and the Philippines. In case you forgot, that is almost directly where Mount Gamalama just erupted. We also had a volcano go off to the east of that near Vanuatu, already causing flight disruption. If you didn't catch the Canadian quake swarm over the last two days, it has been highly unusual to say the least. We also saw a moderate tremor in the South Pacific that actually rang into six range on a couple readers. We've got two boys in event mode, Bay of Bengal seeing fluctuations within only a one meter range. Meanwhile, that same buoy mentioned days ago that showed erroneous 120-foot waves off the coast of Japan is at it again. Remember, the very next day we actually did take a six-pointer in Japan. It's been off since then until last night, still showing instability. What we're seeing in North America is a central low flanked by high pressure. The wind drive around the pressure cells is driving a bit of temperature differential as well. In the northern hemisphere, the lows push counterclockwise, sucking in, while high pushes out clockwise. That's why the leading eastern edge of the low is warmer. This is part of the holiday snow pounding creeping across the country. Let's just say I'm glad the Mobile Observatory is in Texas because you've got an enormous area expecting snow to heavy snowfall to the north, and the other areas are getting freezing rain and then snow. Get ready, folks. Here it comes. We see a tremendous low in the North Atlantic, one of the strongest on the planet right now. You see the same wind drive patterns around the pressure. The convergence of the eastern push with the northern flow out of the southern nations combines to make tonight's watch zones. Got the precipitable water overlay on down under so you can see how it accumulates where the air masses meet. That area is converged upon from nearly all directions and holds tonight's thunderstorm warnings. You've got the current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.